Welcome to the video tutorial on terrain in environment art in Core. This tutorial has been divided into three parts, terrain, foliage, and atmosphere. When you're ready, let's resume with the previous project from the foliage segment of this tutorial series. Now let's finish our new world by adding atmospheric elements. The water cube we made in the first tutorial has the appearance of water, but a player will simply perform a miracle of nature and walk right onto it, rather than diving into it, because the water cube has collision by default. To change this, let's start by selecting the water cube in the hierarchy, and head down to the properties window. Find the scene section and change the collision property to force off. Now hop back into your game and try jumping into the lake again. You should pass right through the surface and land at the bottom like a rock. But we don't want to drop like a rock. We want to swim in the water. So let's make another adjustment. We can use the underwater post-process volume to achieve an underwater effect. Go down to the core content window and find the underwater post-process volume under the post-processing section. Now, simply drag it into your scene on top of the water. Core makes it easy to copy properties from one object to another. We can use this to make the underwater post process match the size and position of the water cube. Select the water cube in the hierarchy and go to the properties window. In the top right hand corner of this window, click the copy properties button. Now, select the underwater post process volume in the hierarchy and once again, go to the properties window. Click the paste properties button right next to the copy properties button. This brings up a new menu, allowing you to decide what properties to paste onto the water cube from the underwater post process item. Select the position, rotation, and scale checkboxes in the menu, and then press the button labeled paste selected parameter value. Now let's test out your level and jump into the water again. Your character should now start swimming automatically when it enters the water. You should also notice some distortion and color in the water. You can change how these settings work in the properties menu for the underwater post process. Now that the terrain is starting to look and behave properly, it's time to play with the sky and add our next level of atmosphere. The default sky and core is composed of three parts, sunlight, skylight, and sky dome. Each of these items can be customized through the properties menu. There are also plenty of sky templates available if you just want to choose one of those. For now, let's head back down to our core content window and do a search for Sky Overcast 1 template. Once you find it, simply drag the template into the scene, and then we can delete the default sky template in the hierarchy by selecting it and hitting the delete key. Well, that made things a little gloomy. Let's customize our sky a little, shall we? Open up the Sky Overcast 01 folder in the hierarchy and select the Environment Fog Default VFX to open its properties in the Properties window. Under the Smart section, change the color property to a bright white and increase the Fog Density property to the value 10 to give the scene a misty look. That's looking pretty good, but let's make it rain to make the scene a little more dynamic. Under the Core Content window, do a search for the word Rain and then drag the Rain Volume VFX and Rain Splash Volume VFX objects into your scene. Select the Rain Volume VFX in the hierarchy, and then drag the object up into the sky by clicking and dragging the blue Z-axis arrow, or by changing the Z-position value in the Properties window. Let's also expand it by using the Transform Scale options in the Properties window to cover the entire area with droplets falling from the sky. Now place the Rain Splash Volume VFX on the ground and expand it to cover the area under the rain to create splashing sounds as players run along the ground. Okay, now let's test your level once again, and you should be able to see and hear the cloudy, rainy weather that you've added, making your scene even more lifelike. Congratulations, you've learned how to add weather and atmosphere to a scene in Core. Thanks for watching our environment tutorial video series. Visit learn.coregames.com for more Core Academy courses and documentation, and make sure to check out our Twitch streams on Core Live to interact with other creators, engineers, developers, and artists in the community. Be sure to join the core discussion and drop us a line in the comments. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to get notified whenever we drop a new video. Thanks for watching and creating in core.